hey everyone welcome back to think tech so in today's video we'll talk about linear regression we'll talk what linear regression is we'll talk about real world scenarios where linear regression is used and then we'll also talk an example where you can use linear regression to solve that problem and then finally towards the end of this video we'll have a hands-on coding exercise where we'll walk through the code of linear regression and see how we can implement it in python so let's get started so let us first start by explaining what linear regression is. So linear regression is basically nothing but a statistical method that is used to model a relationship between dependent, dependent variable and one or more independent variables. The primary goal of linear regression is to find the linear equation that best fits the data and which can be used to predict future values of the dependent variable so basically what we want to do with linear regression is we want to find out a relationship between dependent variable and independent variables and then we can use that relation in future to predict new dependent variables if we get a new set of independent variables so let us understand this with the help of an example so for example you are trying to you know estimate the price of house in your nearby localities so in this scenario, the price of the house becomes your dependent variable and let us consider three parameters that we take into account for calculating the price of the house with first one is the total area, then the number of bedrooms that has and then the number of floors, right? So these, becomes a, these become our independent variable. So for example, let us consider that for uh, as an example, the price of the house is one twenty thousand dollars and your total area that we consider is maybe thirty two hundred square feet then your number of bedrooms is four and number of floors are you know two so this becomes your one data point and you will collect a lot of data points like this so this is your dependent variable and this is your independent variable that you will collect so you will collect a lot of these data points and then you will train your linear regression model on these data points such that it is able to come up with a relationship so that in future when you give it a new set of independent variables so for example now i have trained my model i have a lot of these data points i have trained my model and now in future i want to calculate the price of a house which has a total area of 1800 square feet number of bedrooms it has is three and number of floors it has is one right so now once i have trained my model i can use that model to predict the house price using these three parameters so this is how your linear regression is used or linear regression is used for solving real world problems now let us understand how it actually looks how it mathematically is depicted so in this plot i have considered on y-axis the price of the house and on x-axis i have considered the size so I've just considered one uh, independent variable instead of three just to make the visualization easier. But we'll also discuss what happens when there are more than one independent variables. And I have plotted the data points with, with respect to the size and the price. So you can see that if the, price, if the size of the house is small, then the price also is very low. And if the size of the house is larger, then the price is also very high, right? So this more or less models how real world data will look like now the goal of linear regression is to find out a best fit line that fits this data to the best possible extent right now linear regression can only work with linear equations right so you can only find out or model the data based on a linear equation a linear equation of a line so you have to come up with a line which best fits this data Right? So suppose this is the line that best fits this data. Now once I have come up with this line using my external data points, other data points. Now in future if I have to find out a size, a price of a house where the size is somewhere here. right? So I can just make use of this model to predict the price of my house using this best fit line or this linear equation. Right? So this is how... 
mathematically it is depicted that you plot the points on a graph then you find out the best fit line and then you can use that best fit line or linear equation to find out the price of the uh, basically the value of the dependent variable so now we considered only one independent variable but there can be multiple independent variables so instead when you have multiple ind uh, independent variables like the size bedroom number or number of floors what will happen is this single line will actually become a plane so that is the only change that will happen this will become a plane and you have to find out the best fit linear plane that fits your data points so now having understood what linear regression is and how you can you know uh, solve few small problems using linear regression let us formally define linear regression in terms of uh, these different para these different attributes right so the first and foremost thing is the input so input to a linear regression is a is a tensor so let us consider x which is a tensor and it can be of any degree so for our use case we had a degree of 3 so we had three parameters so let me write that again so we had a okay. we had a, a degree of three so we have an input tensor with three degrees the output is y which is the predicted value, which is a dependent variable, whatever we want to predict. Then comes the parameter. So since we said that it is a linear equation, it will have two parameters, which we uh, can write as W and B. So W is your weight and B is your bias, right? So if you consider a line equation, so W more or less represents the slope of the line and B the biased depicts the y-intercept of that line right then now you have all the important ingredients to define your regression equation so the regression equation basically becomes y hat dot product of your weight into the input tensor plus b so this becomes your input uh, this becomes your regression equation so this is the equation that you are trying to solve for that is you that is something that you are going to use to predict future values as well right so y hat again so just to reiterate y hat is the predicted value w is the parameters that you have at hand x is the input tensor and b again is the parameter bias parameter that you have at hand now once you have this the next thing comes is what do you do with this predicted value or how do you improve your model to make better predictions so then there comes the loss function so loss function takes two inputs one is y this is your actual uh, sorry this is your so y is your expected output and y hat is your predicted output right so this is actual this can be actual or expected both works here so y is your the real value so example if you consider the housing example that we took y is the actual price of the house for those three variables and y hat is the price that your model is trying to predict right so this is these are the two parameters that will go into the loss function and the loss function for linear regression can be defined as y hat minus y whole square right so the predicted value minus the actual value whole squared is your loss value and the ultimate goal of your training your regression model is to reduce the loss reduce the loss reduce the loss as much as you can so that the prediction accuracy of your model increases to the maximum possible number and this is something that we'll see once we move on to the coding part as well so we'll see how we are trying to minimize the loss and what do we do to minimize this loss right <coughs> so so now we see that the loss of uh, now we saw that the loss is basically defined as a function of y hat and y and we saw that it is basically the square difference of the actual and the expected output uh, predicted and the actual output now if we expand this equation a bit this becomes 
this is the something this is something that we defined regression with which is weight into input tensor plus bias minus the actual output right so this becomes your loss function now to optimize this loss we will use a technique called as gradient descent technique now gradient descent is a topic in itself which is something that we'll discuss in future videos but what essentially gradient descent tries to do is it tries to find out the partial derivative of the loss function with respect to the parameters that you can change so one thing you need to understand here is that the only thing that we have in our control is the parameters which is w and b right rest is input we do not have control over output we do not have control over the only thing we have control over is the weight and the bias parameters so now we can only optimize these parameters to improve the accuracy of our model right so that is why what gradient descent does is it tries to find out the partial derivative of the loss function with respect to these parameters and try to nudge these parameters towards a direction where the model will perform better right and this is something that we'll discuss in detail when we talk about gradient descent but now let me just you know uh, write down equations of how the partial derivatives will look like and how the optimization equation will ultimately end up for linear regression so for example let us write down the partial derivative of loss function with respect to w right so what it will become we just have to uh, do a calculate the derivative of this equation with respect to with respect to w so this will become 2 into w times x plus b minus y into x and similarly if we calculate the partial derivative with respect to b this will become 2 times w t x plus b minus y into 1 right so this becomes your partial derivative of the loss function with respect to parameters so this essentially is the value by which the weights should change so that it the accuracy or the prediction accuracy of the model improves a little bit right so that is how gradient descent is expected to work now just to give you a very brief overview of what gradient descent is for example you have uh, this function space now what you have to do is you have to find out the most optimal value which is this right the lowest loss value as we said we have to reduce the loss as much as possible and you find yourself at maybe this location right now what you do is we you find out the derivative of the function at this point and then you take a step towards the descent of this derivative right then you try to move towards the point where this derivative is decreasing or where the value of this derivative is decreasing and in search of the lowest point of that function space right so this is a very high high level overview if this doesn't make sense don't worry we'll cover them in the later videos as well but now just to conclude this discussion so we have the partial derivatives with the weight and uh, bias now what what next right what do we do next with these so now we have to update the values of our parameters right so the first thing is that they will be equal to something right so w new is equals to the w old value that we already had in minus the learning rate into the derivative of the loss function with respect to w right so this is something that becomes your new w value right similarly for bias let me correct this so this basically is your bias old minus the learning rate into the derivative of the loss function with the with respect to bias right so this becomes your new bias value so you replace the linear linear uh, regression equation with the new values of w and bias so that your overall equation improves and you are able to give better predictions now the only thing that we will have uh, we'll discuss here more is the learning rate right this is a new term that we have introduced so alpha is termed as the learning rate now this is actually a hyperparameter w and b were your parameters these are parameters that the model learns by trying out different examples alpha is your hyperparameter hyperparameter 
more or less means that the model will not learn this parameter when you iterate or when you train the model a lot this basically is something that you have to supply externally to the model so it is uh, more or less a learning rate is something that you have to define for the model and it depicts the rate at which the learning of this model happens right so here and this is again we'll discuss in detail when we talk about gradient descent but just to give you a overview so we discussed here right that gradient descent we want to move we want to sort of move into a direction in which the value of the function is decreasing right now how much do you want to move right do you want to maybe move this much or if you want to just move only this much or if you want to move this much how much do you want to move is basically controlled by the learning rate now learning rate is not something that you know you can apply some equations or apply some formulas and come up with one learning rate that will be, uh, work best for your model learning rate is something that you have to try out a few values and then see which one works best for your model right this is something that will change for every model for every problem statements for every data set learning rate might change and you have to actually try out a lot of values and then see which is the value that works best for your model and gives you the highest prediction accuracy although there are some practices around learning rate that learning rate should not be very high because then you will be oscillating too much and then you'll not be able to you know uh, sort of end to the local optima that you are trying to reach to and if it is very small it should not be very small also because if it is very small then the learning will be very slow right you'll have to train your model for a lot of iterations and only then will you be able to make some significant learning so that are more or less the high level principles around learning rate and within those principles you can try different values and different uh, options for learning rate and see which one works better so now this is something that concludes our theory part of uh, linear regression just to recap very quickly Linear regression is defined formally like this with input tensor x, output y, parameters w and b. This becomes your linear equation. This is your loss function and when you optimize your loss function, this is what the partial, this is the partial derivatives that you get. And then using these partial derivatives, you can update your weight and bias using this equation. And then finally replace the parameters in your linear equation linear regression equation and use this equation to make predictions and continue this cycle till the time your loss is very less right so bill wins it is uh, very less below a certain threshold then you can stop training and say that you have reached the maximum possible accuracy that your model can get or the lowest possible loss that you can get with that data set Right? And then we also talked about what learning rate is and how you have to fine tune it using your own understanding and own uh, hit and trial method. This is it. We can conclude our discussion about the theory part of linear regression. We see the formal definitions. We saw how you can use it for a sample problem statement as well. So thank you so much for viewing this video. Please do not forget to like, share and subscribe so that everyone who wants to learn about this can also make use of this video next we will do a coding part of the linear regression which is a next video that we will uh, upload and in that video we'll do a python code walkthrough of how you can implement linear regression and how you can use linear regression to solve problems or you know solve use cases with your own data set see you in the next video